Hey, welcome back. This is example number three, using the variation of parameters to solve second order differential equation. Uh, we're basically looking for a particular solution to the differential equation, but along the way, we're also going to find the complementary solution, and then we can put those two together to get the general solution as well. So to get started, we're going to write down the uh, homogeneous differential equation that is associated with the original differential equation, and that is basically the whole left-hand side is the same, and we just write a zero on the right-hand side. Um, from here, we can write its characteristic equation, which is just r squared plus 2r minus 8 equals 0. We can rearrange this a little bit so we see that we have r plus 4r minus 2 equals 0. And then we can pick out here that we have one root is positive 2 and another root is negative 4. So because we have real distinct roots, then the general solution to the homogeneous equation, which is also the complementary solution to the original differential equation, is just C1e to the 2t plus C2e to the negative 4t. All right, and a little bit further on what this form is, really this is the same thing as saying this is C1y1 plus c 2 y2, where y1 and y2 are a fundamental set of solutions, um, but really the important thing here is that we recognize that y1 is equal to e to the 2t, and y2 is equal to e to the negative 4t. So we're getting pretty close to being able to use this equation right now. Um, the only thing left over here is to find w, and w is the Wronskian of y1 and y2. So in order to get that, we also need the derivative of y1, which is uh, 2e to the 2t, and we need the derivative of y2, which is negative 4e to the 4t. So the Wronskian of y1 and y2 is just what we do is we put it into a basically matrix form in this order, and we take the determinant of it. So we have y1, y2, y1 prime and y2 prime. And if you just go and fill in all those values and uh, perform the determinant, then we're going to find out that w is equal to negative 6e to the negative 2t. So now we have everything that we need in order to uh, basically fill out this expression. And just to make sure we're keeping track, we have y1, y2, we have g of t, and we have the Wronskian of 1 and 2. So y1, let's just make sure we have it here, was e to the 2t y2 is equal to e to the negative 4t. g of t was the original right-hand side of the expression, which is t squared minus 4. And w, the Wronskian of y1 and y2, is negative 6e to the negative 2t. So let's go and plug all of that into the expression. And then we can simplify each term a little bit by pulling out the 1 over negative 6, and then also simplifying these exponentials. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to apply integration by parts um, in each term here. Let's do it one integral at a time. First off, we want to figure out what this guy is. Um, so we have to pick one of the functions to derive and one of the functions to integrate. And it's going to be easier for us if we pick the t squared minus 4 to derive and the e to the negative 2t to integrate. So we're going to derive this one all the way down until it goes to 0. So we, uh, in the first step we get 2t, and we get 2, and then we get 0. Um, here we're just going to keep integrating. So we have negative 1 half e to the negative 2t, and we have positive 1 4 e to the negative 2t, and negative 1 8 e to the negative 2t. So the fast way of doing this integration by parts is basically we multiply these two together uh, without adjusting the sign. We multiply these two together but switch the sign to negative. We multiply these two together without adjusting the sign that they naturally get. And then um, you would also kind of like multiply these together um, but we're, uh, we'd multiply the integral of the product of these, but because one of these is a zero, it basically just disappears and uh, this whole thing is, so we don't need to worry about this one. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space here and we're going to expand out what we have now for the integral of e to the negative 2t times t squared minus 4. And that's what we have right here, e to the negative 2t times all this stuff. All right, so that gets the first integral out of the way, and now we want to repeat the exact same process of doing integration by parts to solve for the other integral. So we just want to come back up here now 
and uh, take a look at our equation. Basically, we have something for this integral. We have something for this integral. We want to plug those back in. So let's go and do that here. And we're going to see that the exponentials cancel out, and it simplifies a little bit. And then if we just group all of the t squareds together, all of the t's together, and all of the terms that have neither t squared or t together, um, then we can simplify a little bit and find that the particular solution is equal to negative 1 8th t squared minus 1 16th t plus 29 64 So let's go and throw a box around that because that is our particular solution. And if that is what you were tasked with finding, then that's great. You can stop here. But if you were asked to find uh, the general solution, then it is just one tiny more, one more tiny step. Um, basically, we have the general solution to the original differential equation is just equal to the complementary solution, which is yc of t, which we already found, plus the particular solution, yp of t. Um, so if you just remember, the complementary solution was c1e to the 2t plus c2e to the negative 4t. And then if we just add on our particular solution, uh, then we just have 1 8th t squared uh, minus a 16th t plus 29 over 64. So again, let's throw a box around that because if you're asked to find it, that is the general solution to the original differential equation.